All right, let's see PCA in action. Uh, as usual, we're gonna import a bunch of libraries. Um, I'm going to bring in a bunch of faces. We're going to use PCA to do face recognition, and probably one, is one of the most classic examples um, from Turk and Pentland of uh, PCA for uh, both dimensionality reduction and recognition. And although PCA is not used today for modern face recognition, this is still a great example of, of how you can use PCA for both dimensionality reduction and then also for doing a little bit of pattern recognition. All the images I'm gonna bring in are 256 by 256. Um, and I have a total of 3,000 some odd images stored in a directory here called face, uh, Faces Crop. So this little for loop right here is going to load in all of those images. So here you can see I'm loading in uh, the, uh, uh, the image uh, from the directory. I'm going to flatten that image. So remember again that we need to pack our data, which is some point in a 256 squared space. Now that's sort of a weird way to think about images. But if you think about, take an image and just unravel it into a long, long, long vector that's one by 256 squared, that's just a really long vector, which is just some point in a high dimensional space. And so we're going to flatten the image and we're going to put it into the column of the data matrix D. And then we're going to have each column be associated with a different face. Very easy, by the way, to forget what's row and what's column. So be very careful here when you're doing that. And I'm going to go ahead and I, you can see I've commented this out, but when I was doing that, I was displaying the images to make sure that in fact they were loading correctly. I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again, visualize your data on the way in and on the way out, it will save you hours and hours and hours of pain debugging. So this little loop right here is going to uh, load all my data in. And now let's think about the dimensionality of my problem. My data matrix is 256 squared by only 3,300. I wanna work on that 3,300 matrix because that is much, much smaller than 256 squared. So I'm going to go ahead and compute the transpose of the matrix and then compute the eigenvectors of that and then transform those and then finish off the PCA. Okay, so here comes PCA. We have to zero mean the data. I'm gonna zero mean the data right here. I'm going to compute the wrong Eigen uh, uh, covariance matrix, D transpose D, which has been transposed from before. And then I'm gonna compute the eigenvectors and the eigenvalue of that matrix. Now, again, those eigenvectors are only 3,300 and change dimensionality, but my data is in a 256 square dimensional space, but I'm going to transform them as I did before, and I'm going to go ahead and just look at them. So I'm going to pick just the first nine eigenvalue eigenvectors. I'm gonna grab the uh, kth, uh, the, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth eigenvector, multiply it by my data matrix. That was that computational trick that we saw in the previous session. And that's my new eigenvector. And I'm gonna reshape that to be x, x dim by y dim because I wanna go back from a vector back to an image. And I'm displaying these here. Okay, so what is, what is this, by the way? What are these images? They're my new basis representation. So remember what we did. We took each face and we thought of it as some point in a 256 square dimensional space. And those are all being represented by the canonical basis. We know that because that's what we did way back when when we were talking about Fourier. Every image, every 1D signal is simply a pixel times the canonical basis, but now in a 256 square dimensional space. We are going to now uh, 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 compute a new orthonormal basis, which is just a bunch of vectors in that 256 square dimensional space that are perpendicular and unit length to each other. We're gonna project each face onto that, and that's going to be our new low dimensional representation. Maybe nine, maybe seven, maybe 12, whatever, we'll see in a little bit. And so what these are doing, what they should tell us is that we can write, we can express images as linear combination of these. Does that make sense? Sure. What is a canonical basis? Each of those bases says, scale this by some amount, add it to something else, scale, some, scale the next dimension by something else, add it to that, and I will eventually be able to represent something. This is just a new basis where each image is a point in that big space. And you notice something interesting here. It looks like this first one, which is the largest eigenvalue eigenvector, is 
just sort of bright where the face is and dark everywhere else. And then the next one has like a dark patch on top and a white patch on the bottom. And this one has a white patch over here and a dark patch over here. And you can see now down here, we're starting to get into what looks more like features, right? I can sort of see the eyes and the mouth emerging. And the idea here is that by scaling these by different amounts and then summing them together, that's a linear basis, I wanna be able to represent faces. And now why is that advantageous? Well, because if, if I can really represent all faces by linear combination of these nine images here, well, my faces now live in a nine-dimensional space. That's amazing. I've gone from a 256 square dimensional space to a nine-dimensional space. And that means everything is much, much easier there. Computations are easier, uh, and maybe even things like recognition and certainly visualization, if we can get down to three and lower, are going to be much, much easier. All right, so here's my top nine eigenvalue eigenvectors of my covariance matrix, which capture the most amount of variance of my data. Now let's actually do the dimensionality reduction. All right, so that's this little bit of code right here. I'm gonna reduce the dimensionality to seven. That doesn't really help so much for visualization. If you want to visualize, you're going to have to go down to two or three. There's really nothing else you can do to look for clusters in the unsupervised learning way. We're going to do this, um, we're gonna do something a little bit different here, which we're now going to use this new representation, not just to do visualization and look for clusters and things that are similar, but to actually do pattern recognition. Now, why did I go to all this trouble? I've got a bunch of images, why don't I just compute the difference between them? Well, part of the reason is that that difference calculation is very, very expensive when you're doing it in a 256 dimensional, uh, 256 squared dimensional space. And the other reason is that that representation of pixels is very, very finicky. Take an image, take the same image and scale and shift it by one pixel, and those images will look very different if you do pixel-wise differences. Sure it does, every pixel no longer aligns. But the idea here, and, and the, sort of the brilliance of the Turk and Pentland paper of eigenfaces, was that in this new representation, this low dimensional representation, not only is it computationally more efficient, but you are capturing more of the essence of the image when, when you're looking at the weights associated with this new basis. These aren't pixels anymore, right? If I had shown you what the canonical basis was, what would it look like? It would have one white pixel and zero everywhere else, another white pixel and zero everywhere else. So every value, every pixel, tells you a lot about one value in the image and it tells you nothing about anything else. The, the weights associated with these basis vector tells you something about the entire image. And that representation is very interesting when it comes to things like recognition. So we're gonna project down to seven. Why did I pick seven? Somewhat arbitrary. But the way this is typically done is you look at the fall off of the eigenvalues, and when you can capture enough of the variance, that is the sum of the first n eigenvalues is some percentage of the full set of sum of, of all the eigenvalues, you've captured a fair amount of the variance of the data. You can cut it off there. You've got efficiency. You're working now in a low dimensional space, and the representation is richer than a simple pixel representation. All right, so I'm gonna look at seven eigenvectors. I'm going, so there's the for loop here. I'm going to grab the, um, each of the eigenvectors. So I grab it out of the original covariance multiplied by the data matrix, and then simply project my data, which are all of the faces onto um, each of seven eigenvectors. And what that means is that my new representation for every single face goes from 256 squared pixel values to seven numbers. Those seven numbers correspond to the weight associated with each of the eigenvectors that I computed in PCA. And then you can do really simple face recognition. All right, so how do we do that? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add the, the mean back into the images because I wanna look at these images in a minute. So I'm gonna grab a random face out of the data set, uh, the 200th face. And I'm going to ask, find me the face that is most similar to this not in pixel representation, not in canonical basis representation, but in our new PCA representation that is only seven dimension. So for each other face, assuming it's not the same face here, compute the, diff, the norm, the vector norm, that's all it is, between the jth representation, that's the face I've grabbed, and all other faces, and then just find me the minimum face. 
Okay. So think here about object rec face recognition as being some as saying something as simple as I'm in some low dimensional space. I have a face that's a point here, and I want to know what is the closest face to me. And if that representation is a good representation, then those faces should look well similar. Yeah. So let's go ahead and um, uh, display everything. We're going to display the original face plus the face that we find as the closest face, and it's going to look something like this. So this is the query face here, and this is the closest face it found. It's actually not bad. So now you see how PCA is used for, and eigenvectors are used for face recognition. Take a bunch of fa faces of somebody, in fact, take a bunch of faces of a whole bunch of other people, do PCA, each person will either be one or a group of faces inside of that new dimensional space, get a query image um, over here, and simply search that low dimensional space, now very efficient, and a richer, better representation of the underlying data, and whoever's closest is a match. And obviously, you put something like a threshold to say, well, if it's within this distance, I have high uh, belief in that um, face recognition, otherwise I have a low belief. Now, for a long time, PCA dominated and eigenfaces dominated the face recognition literature. Obviously, today things have gotten much more sophisticated. Neural nets, have, of course, have proven to be much, much more accurate um, at recognizing faces and detecting faces. But this is one of the classic computer vision algorithms. And I just wanted to introduce to it, it to you because it brings in some of the uh, practical things you have to do when you're manipulating uh, faces, that dimensionality reduction and that trick with the eigenvectors. Um, and it's just a very nice way of thinking about images in these vector spaces and what these new representations uh, give.